Summer, First Baptist Church Summer Enrichment Program is a super summer. Your child will explore, engage, and learn. 434-979-0952 for a super summer. Well, we're standing to our feet. I'll read the word. I come from First Samuel. First Samuel. There is children's church. I come from First Samuel. First Samuel. Verse 1. It's in your bulletin as well. That first Samuel, you got it? Amen. Amen. Is that chapter one? Is that chapter one or chapter two? Amen. 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 It reads like this. Amen. It's it's small, but I'm going to read it. Amen. I won't read all of it. Please, please, let's read it together. I promise you, you will be blessed. There was a certain man from Olympia, a Zephite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jehoram. The son of Elhu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, the Ephraimite. He had two wives, one who was called Hannah, the other, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice the Lord Almighty at Shiloh where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, Benina, and to all his sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion, because he loved her. And the Lord had closed her room. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up in the 
church. Her rival provoked her till she wept and she would not eat. Her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, Hannah, why are you weeping, baby? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted, depressed? Don't I need more to you than ten signs? I'm going to stop right there. Amen. Praise God. Please know there are a lot of other verses there. I want you to read them for context, but I'm going to be reading, preaching from this section, focusing on this Bible spotlight on these verses. So let's pray together. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit in this place. First of all, we thank you for your Holy Word. We thank you for your Word that became flesh and now and dwelt upon us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is in us, that empowers us, that opens our ears and changes our hearts. We thank you now for the privilege of being part of the body of believers, the people of faith. We, who, we are they who know that you are in complete control of the best is yet to come. We are the ones who understand that this world is not spiraling out of control, but God, you sit on the throne. God, you reign supreme. God, you want to work it out for the good of us, those who love you, and those who are called according to your purpose. In Jesus' name, we pray, and the people of God say amen. Praise God. Amen. Would you say this to your neighbor real quick? Five things your family can't forget. Come on, say it. He was 13. Jackie Hagler was in her home in Florida, Lakeview, Florida. She was in her home. She had friends over and family over. They were having a jewelry party. They were looking at fake diamonds and pearls. So as they had their party, they were enjoying themselves until, without warning, without notice, a man flung open her front door. He pulled out a pistol and he said to her, this is a robbery, give me everything we've got. She looked at her friends and family and knew that somebody was playing a joke on her. She said, who did this? The man said, ma'am, I'm going to shoot someone. Give me everything you've got. Finally, he released the clip to show her that he wasn't playing and he was ready to do business. I've come by home this morning to let you know that your family is under attack. Mm, amen. That the family is under attack. That it is not an incident or an accident, but it is a strategic strategy for the enemy to mess with you and all those you are connected to. He wants to defeat, destroy, and defame your family. As I looked through the Bible, I found there were countless examples of family. Incidentally, God's currency is family. When he wants to talk about how he works on the earth, he talks about the family. The first thing that I want to tell you of these five things that you can't forget is that every family is different. Now, I had to learn this lesson when I was about 12 years old. I had a wonderful dad and a wonderful mom. I was living like it was gold, and then my parents got divorced. And so for many years, I thought, because my father was no longer there, that we were no longer a family. I thought, because I was different, I was deficient. Now, somebody here, it might be a grandmother raising a grandson. It might be a, a, a single mother raising her three daughters. It might be a single father raising his son. Whatever the circumstances, God says, if I put you in a family, your family doesn't have to be deficient because it's different because I'll make up the difference. Amen. I know I'm in the Bible because look at the text. This family was problematic. It was the husband, Elkanah, y'all call him El. It was the wife, Hannah, and it was the other wife, Penina. Now, I didn't make it up. I'm just reading the story to you. That's a problem. Whenever you have one man and two women, there's going to be some trouble going on. <laughs> Consequently, Hannah had this deep, deep pain because her family was different. But I want to remind you that God says that he's in your family. Hear me. Look at me. So 
because I don't want up in it. Because your family is different. Because mama died, or because he left, or because she left, or because the children, you don't have any, it's just you two. God says, you're still my family. Now I'm not talking about sin here. I'm talking about God's design not being all that he wants it to be because of the reality of life. I want you to know God is still in the mix. And God says, I will make up the difference. He said, uh, the earliest memory, I met him when I was, my father, when I was only two years old. I'm told he took me to a jazz concert and gave me a, a basketball. This was 2013 when Barack Obama was sharing his testimony. He said, and I want to be different in my family. He says, I want to be the role model for Michelle, his wife, and my children that I never had. I want to be there for my family. We all miss that. Barack Obama understood the reality, even though he came from a family that was different. His family did not make him deficient, and he decided he would make a difference. We all miss that. And the, the importance of that is, let me just pause for a moment and go off the notes. The importance of that is the image of the wrong father has been so maligned and messed up for generations that Barack Obama has been used by God to show the world that he is a godly father to his family. And you may not agree with his politics or the dog he chose, but you can say that he hasn't had no scandals, that he hasn't had any scandals on nobody tiptoeing out of his office of these past eight years. And that is a testimony to a family and a man who came from a different family, but decided that even though his family was different, he was not deficient, but he would make a difference. This is the testimony that is taught in our text. That God says, just because it's different doesn't mean I'm not there. In fact, I will make up the difference. But that's not all. Because this text is also tailored to teach us that every family needs a family of faith. Notice that when Hannah was going through, what did she do? She went to the house of faith. She went to the church where she felt comfortable. She went with the people who she believed were praying. Now, this was not a perfect church. They had problems. I can tell you there are some detailed problems with this church at Shiloh because uh, Phineas was there, Eli's sons were there, and they were known to get it wrong. I'm in the Bible. They were known to do wrong with the ladies in the church and to steal the offering. But look, also at Shiloh was the ark. Y'all uncomfortable? Also at Sh I'm just teaching. Also at Shiloh was the ark of the covenant, which was the. Want a super summer? First Baptist Church Summer Enrichment Program is a super summer. Your child will explore, engage, and learn. 434-979-0952 for a super summer. And to teach us that every family needs a family of faith. Notice that when Hannah was going through, what did she do? She went to the house of faith. She went to the church where she felt comfortable. She went with the people who she believed were praying. Now, this was not a perfect church. They had problems. I can tell you there are some detailed problems with this church at Shiloh because uh, Phineas was there, Eli's sons were there, and they were known to get it wrong. I'm, I'm in the Bible. They were known to do wrong with the ladies in the church and to steal the offering. But look, also at Shiloh was the ark, y'all uncomfortable? Also at, I'm just teaching, also at Shiloh was the ark of the covenant, which was the spirit of, and I ain't running around, I'm not talking about me, that was the spirit of God. And, and as long as the spirit of God is there, you ought to be there. You ought to show up, uh, because you understand that your family needs to be anchored in the family of faith. Why? Because God says, on a rainy day, if nobody shows up, and I'll bless your world. I'll bless your life. I will give you one word that will forever change your circumstance and situation. God says, I will meet you there. Back in Psalm 91, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place where the most high shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say, That's the house of the Lord. That's the family of faith. But it's not this there. He goes on to say, I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house. 
Elijah to be our witness and look at me please and to be our prophet. God says that I come here because I understand that God calls me and says he will meet me here. God says, yes, I love you everywhere. Yes, you can pray at home. Yes, you can worship at home. But there's something special about entering into the house of God. Enter his gates with praise. Can enter his courts with praise. We may come to him and bless his name. Okay, okay, I'm wrong about it. Jesus as a child is mentioned only one major time. And when he is mentioned as a child, do you realize it's walking with his church? It's teaching in his church. As a child, he was in the house, a family of faith. And how much more if Jesus showed up every Sunday on the other Sabbath, every Saturday, how much more if Jesus showed up Sunday or Saturday after Saturday, how much more should I show up to get a word and to get my worship on? There is something irreplaceable and unmistakable about the family of faith. Would you say that? There's something irreplaceable. Okay, we, we, I get it. But there's something irreplaceable and unmistakable about the family of faith. So all I'm trying to say is God expects us to be connected here. And the good news is when you are connected here, when you need something, you won't be a stranger. You'll come into the house and say, Lord, I came with a special request today. Lord, I came with a special need today. Lord, I came with a special... Uh, that's what she did. She was the house of prayer. She teaches us a valuable lesson. That even though there were some challenges in her life, even though there were some challenges in the temple, she showed up because she knew God would meet her there. But not only that... This text is tailored to teach us that every family member has needs. Why don't you tell your neighbor, I got some needs. You feel uncomfortable when you put me I understand, I understand. Try one more time. I've got some needs. Every family member has needs. Now, when we first see Hannah's needs, she had a biological need. Her biological clock was ticking, and it was her desire to have a child. That was her need. Uh -huh. Elsa and I said, baby, don't I make up for 10 sons? And she didn't want to hurt his feelings, but she was saying, no, that doesn't meet my need. But if you're not careful, you just won't see Hannah's need, because they all needed something. Penina needed to be the priority in her man's life. And brother, since I've got the mic and I'm preaching, I might as well tell you, every good woman wants to be the only woman in your life. Man, did you get that? That felt flat. Let me go again. Every 